Now, then we come to the three-way tag team number one contender match between the Viking Raiders, the Lucha Suits, and Skid Row. And each of the teams has their female valet, manager, handler, mistress, as you like to say, whatever the case, in their corner. Well, I like to say mistress when it's a mistress. I don't think any of these women have been shown to be mistresses for any Well, you women. used that term the other day. About a mistress. Well, and, and that hadn't been established. But we nevertheless, we 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 had uh, we got Zelina Vega, we got B Fab, and we've got Val Halla. That's her name, Valerie Halla. Remember from the uh, Poughkeepsie Hallas. They're a big family up there. So I already knew by the time I watched this because it went viral. It was actually infectious, is what it was. I knew what was coming. But even before we got there, I got to be honest with you. Every time that Top Dollar gets in the ring, it's visually fascinating to me for whatever perverse reason. I mean, it, it, every time he touches somebody, it looks like he's a wacky waving arm inflatable tube whale. His arms are just flailing and his, and his, the baggy basketball outfit that he wears. And he, he, obviously is convinced that things that he is are is doing are impressive and that he's over because of the d demeanor and the attitude he takes with it and the grandiose it's like he's the rock about to give the people's elbow have you seen this am i imagining this no and i completely agree with you and i'm happy to hear you say this he's utterly fascinating to watch because it's like a guy has no experience in the ring at all and they've just put him out there even though we know he's been trained by them Yes, it's it's like, like I said the you know the basketball dad that you know gets to play with the kids on the weekends, right? And he let me show you how I used to do it and he can't do anything. But he's acting like he's doing everything. And at one but Michael Cole said he's lost almost 100 pounds. What the fuck did he start at? By the way, he looked better bigger now that I see him. Well, because he's 100 he has, pounds of weight loss. He's had no discernible physique to the point where I would say he's almost stoop shouldered. There's no arms there. There's no muscle tone. It's a, a, admirable. If he's losing weight, if he, if he was trying to be what he looks like, which is a 40 year old car salesman that tries to play basketball on the playground with the kids on weekends, it's admirable. He's lost a hundred pounds. He's trying to be a pro wrestler. He may have lost the only look that he had that was any good if he was 400 fucking pounds because this but my god again when he he teased the dive a time or two and it was like he looks to the hard camera he knows where the camera is and he knows the motions to make it just again looks ludicrous when he makes them it looks like he's a spongebob squarepants character down at the bottom of the ocean kind of waving in the the sea. So well, anyway. But, but the other thing that you're kind of glossing past is he behaves like this. And B-Fab at ringside, she's got a great look. She's also behaving like this is a big deal. The fans are not reacting to anything he does. They've already no, decided because, that they don't yeah. like him. They don't like Hit Row. They're not interested. And and that's, you know, it's like he's leading, he's conducting an invisible choir with the fans in his head that are cheering for him and anticipating this. So finally, he teased the dive a time or two, and finally, he went for it. And they had contrived the situation where almost everybody in the match, I think maybe everybody in the match, was over on one side of the ring to attempt to be the catchers for this fucking fiasco and he sees he's in the ring all by himself and he looks at the hard camera and gives it the look like oh and he gives some kind of finger sign he should have given the thumbs down i think it was just three fingers down and a thumb up your ass i don't know what the fucking sign was supposed to be and he hits the far ropes and he starts running across the ring And he jumps head first. And Brian, you've seen the guys do. Undertaker did this one year at WrestleMania. 
where you do the head first dive and the hands out, it's like Superman taking off out the window and going over the top rope. And you've seen it before where a guy will get all the way over the rope and then his feet will hang on the top and that will stop his momentum and he'll go crashing face first to the ground. You've seen that a number of times, right? I have, yeah. Well, this wasn't that. What this was, was this fucking guy did the goddamn George Reeves fucking push off and the Superman jump out the window on the old TV series. And the only part of him that made it over the top rope was his arms, his head, and his chest. <laughs> his belly caught the top rope. And because he had flown into it with all of his heart and soul, him hitting that top rope with his stomach so fast, he immediately snapped him upside down to where his fucking feet flew straight up in the air and his head not just went head first to the apron but he was spinning at such a rate that his face flew underneath the bottom <laughs> rope he almost dove over the top rope and ended up back in the ring i've never that would be impossible but he almost did it so when he came down, his feet are going over now and his head and chest are underneath the bottom rope, which has the luck of fools and whales has turned him over to where he didn't go head first to the floor. It tur And he just rolls off the apron of the fucking ring on his feet and walks off like he did something. And meanwhile, everybody that was standing there waiting for it they all just fell down anyway. Even he never even touched anybody and they all just crumpled to the ground. I have never, I, it was like the top <laughs> rope gave him a big backdrop. I have seen guys use the ropes for moves, but I've never seen the, one of the ropes use a guy for a move. <laughs> you know and what? It, and this is one of those and this is one of those cases where WWE production helped because they made it look a lot better than it was. <laughs> oh yes, because the fan cam footage on Twitter from different angles of it showed just how ridiculous because you couldn't tell from the official TV version how far he was from missing everybody that fell down anyway. You could still I mean there was no way around the fucking flip. But then did you ever see his tweet afterwards, after I told you about it? Well, he blocked me, apparently, at some point, so I didn't well, I'm see Well, I'm tweet. blocked, too, but the fucking websites were actually picking it up, going, look at this, what this guy's saying now. And they would embed it in there, but basically, after this became the talk of the town, so to speak, the topic of conversation amongst polite society, well, old top dollar, I guess he got his feelings hurt. He, you know, he he tweeted out like, you know, thank God, prayer hands or whatever, that uh, I'm okay. My foot gave out. His foot gave out on the jump is what happened. And he, he tweeted a clip to prove that he could do it. He said, here's a clip of me when I was 50 pounds heavier. And apparently it's, I guess, at the Performance Center because he's, I, I assume he's been in the WWE program. He's never wrestled for anybody else. So it had to be at a Performance Center. This wasn't the Performance Center itself. It was like a small rec center or something, a Performance Center show in Florida. It was one or two rows of ringside, that type of thing. Everybody's got to learn somewhere. I'm not knocking that, but I'm saying this was not on television. And he tweeted this clip. He said, I'm 50 pounds heavier. Here I am doing... Well, in this case, yes, he's exactly right. He took off running, and he dove over the top rope, and he cleared that some bitch, and he went straight over the other side and went right in between all the people that were trying to catch him face first to the fucking floor. And that's the, the clip that he tweeted to prove that he could actually do it. So he can prove he got over the rope, but he still had never proved that he can actually hit this fucking thing. In general, is that a bad idea? The whole idea, well, you saw me botch this, but look, I used to be able to do it. 
Well, yes. I mean, there's so many bad ideas and things wrong with that wrapped up. The one is that he's doing it anyway. He wants to be cool. You can tell he thinks he's cool already, and he wants to be cooler. A 300-and-whatever-pound guy marked down from 400-and-whatever shouldn't be doing a goddamn dive over the top rope even if he can, unless it's The Undertaker at WrestleMania. I'll go for that. When somebody's getting a seven-figure payoff to do it and somebody's getting a seven-figure payoff to stand underneath it. But this fucking moron for a flat salary and the idiots that were standing there not knowing he wasn't going to land on him, here's the goddamn thing again. Sure, yes, some of these... Uh, Felix over in AEW, he does a lot. Well, no, he falls on his ass and head a lot too. I mean, it's, uh, one of these acrobatic wrestlers may be able to nail this shit every time without hurting themselves or anybody else. Maybe that's possible. I don't know. I can't call that person. I've never been dove on, nor have I dove upon anyone. I just fucking worked and made money. But I'll tell you what, I've known a lot of smart wrestlers and a lot of successful wrestlers and a lot of wrestlers that made a lot of money and a lot of wrestlers made a lot more money in wrestling business than I have. And I don't know any of them for just every goddamn television match or every time they're in a house show or every time they're anywhere that they would want to stand there at ringside underneath some moron diving off of or over the ropes onto them, and whether they were singly standing there or in a fucking group. How many times have we, was that Ridge Holland? He caught a guy on a fucking dive, blew his fucking quad and had surgery and was out for months and months and months. Uh, same thing happened 20 years ago to goddamn, um, uh, Scott Putsky's son, or Scott Put Ivan Putsky's son, Scott, caught Brian Christopher, blew his fucking leg. We've seen guys land on their heads. We've seen guys give themselves concussions. We've seen guys turn ankles or whatever the fuck, and not the worked turned ankle of the balding buck the other week, but actual injuries. But besides that, what nobody is thinking about, and I'm surprised is not more prevalent, if you're standing there, even if you're in a group of five wrestlers that should be able to catch 300 pounds, you're not catching a 300-pound sack. You're catching, especially this uncoordinated whale-like individual, allegedly going to fly over the top rope. Where are his elbows coming? The top rope's nine feet off the fucking ground. So the guy's going to be coming from 10 feet, whether he's 200 pounds or 250 or 165 or 300, no matter how coordinated he is. He's flipping, he's spinning, he's doing a backflip. Where's his knees coming? Where's his elbows coming? Where's the back of his head coming? If a bunch of people are reaching up to catch him and, he, and, and he's coming at a high rate of speed and he weighs a couple hundred pounds, where do their elbows go? Related to my fucking face if I'm behind them. It's stupid for something that everybody does in every fucking match. It's a needless risk for a momentary pop that all it does is look phony and give the trampoline cowboy fans something to fucking clap about for 10 seconds and give them a quiz. Stand at the door at the end of the show as they're all filing out of the arena and say, describe the most impressive flip of the night and who was standing there to catch the guy. And see how many can put down all the fucking names. So you just risked your goddamn face and your dental work or potentially fucking blowing a knee or whatever the case to be a miscellaneous extra in a fucking mosh pit to catch some idiot that may or may not be hitting his target. Fuck you. Have you ever seen someone try to, do, I can't even say it without laughing, have you ever seen someone before try to dive over the top rope? That side shot from the fan cam showed it. He didn't even leave the ground. I mean, no. I don't, it wasn't even like a jump. It, you can't even call it a jump. He, like just <laughs> the top the top rope of the ring is a, in the WWE is approximately 5 feet off the off the mat 
and he hit it with just the exactly his center of gravity, his belly button area. And he's six foot six. So he was standing on his tippy toes and got three inches of air at best. And actually, that used to be the way that Bill Dundee took his over the top rope bump on purpose because he was, he was, I've never seen anybody else do it. And he could nail it. It looked fantastic in that you would throw him and he would just go stomach first into the rope, bend at the waist, handstand off the apron without holding any of the ropes and go off onto the concrete floor. And that was a fucking great bump. He was taking it on purpose, not by accident. This fucking guy, and the, the rib is, this guy couldn't do this again in a million years. If he tried every day for the rest of his life, he'll never do that again. How much longer do you think the Hit Row Project will be on the air? Boy, unless there's pictures of somebody and goats, um, I think they're already looking for a way to, because they've already shortened everything up. Their matches are as short as they can get. But my guy, I mean, this this was the spectacular botch, but, every, you know, the one kid, what, Ashante, he might be all right, but in between the, the girl just stares and looks out of place and dances around with the long legs. You can tell she does and they tried to have a match with, they booked a match with her a couple weeks ago and didn't actually have it. So that shows where her progress is at. So I... I this guy bumps like a drunk in a slip and slide is basically what. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway. Uh, oh, but there's more to the match. Now, wait a minute. We, 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 we got to get to the finish because they got the girls at ringside. So the girls got in and did spots with each other. And it looked like they nearly killed themselves. One came off the turnbuckles to the floor with a hurricane Rana that fucking went sideways. I don't know what the fuck. But then finally, the finish was one of the lucha suits was going to run at top dollar and top dollar was going to scoop him up for a double team move where he would scoop him up and hold him in his arms like you were rocking a baby to sleep. And Ashante was going to drop kick the guy while he was up in his arms. He was going to go backwards with him, right? Can you visualize that? Somewhat. Well, they can't. Because apparently, again, as much preparation goes into these things, they had to have to come up with this move. If it was their idea, which I don't know why an agent would say do this, so it had to be their idea. They had to have at least gotten a ring and said, look, I'll pick you up like this and he'll come from here. And when they got to it, it fell the fuck apart. The guy's coming off the ropes at top dollar. Top dollar goes to scoop him up. And when he scoops him up, the guy's momentum is still going. So top dollar almost loses him. He bends over and he's trying to keep him up in his arms, but they almost fell through the fucking ropes on the other side of the ring. The guy in the, in top dollar's arms had to grab the top rope to steady himself. So the top dollar could get under him to pick him up. Well, now Top Dollar has turned around and he's got him up in his arms like the rocking baby. But now Ashante is not on the right side of Dollar to do the drop kick. Dollar. So instead of being in front, and he should have been right in front. Go back and watch the DVR. He should have been right in front of Dollar and jump up and drop kick the guy in the chest. But instead, he's on the right side, 90 degree angle of Dollar. So he just jumped up and kicked the fucking guy that Dollar was holding wherever he could hit him, which which basically knocked Dollar off balance, and he just fell backwards with the fucking guy. And they said, and, and Top Dollar sold his their own finish. <laughs> he was late. <laughs> he took the bump, and Adonis pinned the fucking guy while Dollar is laying there selling their own fucking finish with a look of pain on his face and holding his ribs because it probably hurt him. Oh, God damn it. Oh, we might. I'm about to get the vapors. I'll tell you what. Oh. oh. Whoa. It was that, a scream. An extended scream. A scream over on SmackDown this past week. Was that the main event? No, no. 
the main event was the bloodline. That was just the match that probably ran all the people off.